Hey guys, in this video I'll be talking about bearings. First I'll go over the three things you need to remember about bearings, then I'll go over some example problems. So hopefully you've used a compass before, or at least you understand how a compass works. Basically you hold it in your hand and the pointer points towards north, magnetical north, and then you know you can orientate yourself and travel in a certain direction that you want to. Um, so bearings use this idea of a compass. Um, and the reason behind bearings is that you need to, if you need to describe a direction to someone that they need to travel, you need some common language. So if you're sailing a ship from one port to another, um, if, if your port uses some type of directional language and the next port uses a different type of directional language, you're not going to know which direction to travel in. So you need a common uh, kind of way to communicate which way you need to travel. Um, so, and that's, and that's what we call bearings. So the way that bearings work is basically every measurement is taken from north clockwise and is given in three digits. So if I want to tell you to travel northeast, I could say travel northeast or I could say travel at 45 degrees. And so if you're, again, if you're sailing a ship, uh, someone could give you a direction, travel, you know, 90 degrees from your current direction. So you could turn right 90 degrees and you'd know your new direction. Um, so there's three main things you need to remember about bearings. So to give a bearing accurately, you measure from north, you measure clockwise and you use three figures. So having a look, if I want to travel in the direction of P here, I could say um, the bearing of P, the bearing of P is, and we look from north, always measuring from north, and we go around, and you can see P is at 240 degrees there. So I've measured from north, I've gone clockwise, and I've got to P and that is 240 degrees. So hopefully that makes sense so far. So once you've once you memorize and remember and understand these three rules, you know everything you need to know about bearings. So let's have a look at some example problems that you might come across. So the first one, this is about as simple as it can get to do with bearings. So if I go through these, you're not quite understanding perhaps find some more problems that you can do just like this one and get the hang of these before you move on. So question one says, these diagrams have not been drawn accurately. Find the bearings of X from Y in each case. Now this is a key point in this sentence here because questions about bearings often are framed in this way in saying the bearing of X from Y. Now if you think about this sentence here, of X, from y. So if it says from y, that means we're traveling away from y. So find the bearing of x from y, we're traveling away from y towards x. Uh, so if we have a look, um, that we've given, we're given the bearing from north to y. If you look at this diagram here in A, y is a bearing of 95 degrees uh, shown in this diagram. And we want to know the bearing of x from y. So one way we can do this is looking at the diagram, we can draw a north line from y here. Remember, oops, remember bearings are always measured from north. So we need to know, usually if we ask to give a bearing like this, we need to know where north is first. So let's say that's north. Now, because I've drawn this north line here, I know it must be parallel with this north line, just by the fact that it's pointing north. So using our knowledge of parallel lines, I know that this angle in here must add up to 180 degrees, these two angles here. So I can figure out what this angle in this little spot is. So 180 take 95 will give us what this angle is. So that's going to be 85 degrees. How does that help us? Well. I need to know the bearing of X from Y. So I need to measure from north and measure all the way around to X here and get 
And what the angle I'm actually looking for is this one around here. Why would I take this angle? Well, if you look at this diagram carefully, if I'm starting at Y, uh, what direction do I need to travel in to get to X? And it's exactly the same. Now it might look different, but it's exactly the same as this idea of the direction of P on this diagram. Um, if you think about it, if you think that I'm starting at this point in the middle and I've asked for the bearing of P, firstly I need to start at north, I need to go clockwise, and I need to um, finish at P and find that angle from north. So using these three facts, measure from north, measure clockwise and use three figures. I can look at this diagram, start at north, measure clockwise and use three figures, I can get to X. So what will the angle in this section be? Well it will be, we know that points, angles around a point add up to 360 so we can do 360 take 85 and that gives us 275 degrees. So then we can state our answer in a sentence and we can say the bearing of X from Y is 275 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at part B now. So Again, we're going to use this idea of parallel lines with the north line um, to find the bearing. And so if we draw our north line in here at Y, uh, now we know the bearing of Y from X is 248 degrees, and but we need the angle in here because we need the angle towards x from y, so that's actually going to be the angle inside there, so in order to find that angle first we need to find this angle in here and use our knowledge of interior angles of parallel lines to end up with that one, so, so 360 take 248, that's going to be 112 degrees and then these two angles they need to add up to 180 so if we do 180 take 112, that leaves us with uh, 68 degrees in here. So our bearing of X from Y going in this direction will be 68 degrees. So stating that in a sentence, we can say the bearing of X from Y is 68 degrees. And I've actually missed something in this answer because bearings always have to be written with three numbers, so that's to be 0, 68 degrees. Okay, hopefully this is making sense so far. Moving on to question two. Now already, before I've even read the question, I know I probably have to draw a diagram with this because they haven't given me a diagram. Usually in bearings questions, it's helpful to have a diagram. So. Question 2, part A says the bearing of A from B is 104 degrees, work out the bearing of B from A. So we know we've got two points, A and B, and I'm starting at B, so I'm going to draw B first, because I'm travelling from B to A, and then A is about 104 degrees, so imagine 90 is there, so maybe 104 degrees is about there. So if I was to draw a north line from B, you can see that bearing to A would be about 104 degrees. Now I need the bearing of B from A, so going in this direction. So again, we can draw a north line in here and label these angles 104 degrees and Remember, I need to measure clockwise, so first I'll have to find this angle and then that will help me find this angle around here. Always remembering those three rules, from north clockwise. So uh, firstly, let's find this angle, 108, 180 take 104, that's going to be 76 degrees in there. And then 
I can use that to find this angle around the outside here. So 360 take 76, that's going to be uh, 284 degrees. Okay, so the answer to that question, the bearing of B from A is 284 degrees. Okay, so next part says the bearing of E from F is 83 degrees. Again, we've got two points and we're starting at F. So here's F here and E is 83 degrees at a bearing of 83 degrees. So it's going to be maybe up here somewhere. And it doesn't need to be exact, but it just needs to give you a good idea of what's going on. Now, if we draw our north line at F, <coughs> excuse me, then we know that this angle towards E is going to be 83 degrees. And then if we draw our north line again at E, uh, remember we start at north and we go clockwise, so the angle we need to find is going to be around here. So again, we need to find this angle inside here to find that one. So we do 180 take 83, that's going to be 97 degrees in here. And then this bearing around the outside, well, that's going to be 360 take 97, and that leaves us with 263 degrees. So the answer to that one, work out the bearing of F of F from E, that's going to be 263 degrees. Question three here is more something that you might encounter in an exam. Um, so it says, a plane takes off from a runway in a northwest direction. And what you want to do is start trying to picture this, uh, this scenario and try maybe start drawing yourself a little sketch in order to understand what's going on. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so a plane takes off, before I've even read the rest of the question, I want to start sketching this out. So a plane takes off a wrong way in the northwest direction. So if I draw my north pointer and west over here, so northwest is actually directly in the middle of north and west, so it's going to be out here somewhere. And then turns through an angle of 75 to its right. So this plane is going the northwest direction, then it turns right 75 degrees. Okay, somewhere out here. A helicopter flying in a bearing of 232 degrees, so that's going to be, so this is south down here. 232 is going to be somewhere out here. Uh, needs to turn to fly in the same direction as the plane. What turn must a helicopter make? Okay, so I've got myself a little sketch. I kind of understand what's going on. And now I know what the question is. I'm going to actually go back to this sketch and do it more accurately. So why have I wasted my time doing that initial sketch while I'm reading the problem? Well, when I'm reading through a question, I actually like to kind of understand what's going on while I'm reading it. And then when I get to the question, I, I have a better understanding of what I need to do. So first thing I'm going to do is draw a more accurate sketch. So I've got north and west here, and I know that that plane is, and I can do this very quickly because I made those initial uh, jot, jotting sketches um, before I read the question. So this is northwest. Now, the, west is 270 degrees, north is 360 degrees, and northwest is actually in the middle of those at 315 degrees, and this turns right at an angle of 75. So what angle will this be at? If I turn 45 degrees, I get to 360. So another 30, this bearing will be 0, 30 degrees. Remember, bearings always have to be in three digits. And we know the helicopter travels at an angle of 232 degrees. And I need to get to the bearing of, zero, of 30 degrees. Well, so one thing I could do is 360 degrees take 232 degrees to find this angle in here. And then I can just add 30 to that to find what, 
what direction the helicopter needs to turn. So if I do that little problem, I get 128 degrees and then add 30 to that and I get 158 degrees. So to sum that all up, the helicopter needs to turn right 158 degrees um, and that's basically what we need to do that for that problem and so all I really need to understand about bearings to answer those problems was the fact that I measure from north I measure clockwise and I use three figures as long as you can master those three facts about bearings you should be able to answer any question that comes up um, and also uh, well you're aware that when I answer these questions I also use facts about parallel lines and other things so bearings questions often aren't given just by themselves you also need to use other aspects of geometry in order to get to the final answer but if there is if there is this question of bearings introduced into the problem then they're the three main things you need to know. As always, I hope you found this helpful. Leave a like if you did, or leave a comment letting me know what you thought. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.